Hello, welcome. Uh, my name is Tom Tully. I'm a Catholic priest in um, Puque Varina, uh, just south of Raleigh, North Carolina. And i um, invited uh, by Cheryl McCarthy to share with you a few minutes. Come in, take a load off your feet, sit down, um, quiet and still your mind. In a chapel, we try to figure out a way to center our attention on the good news of Christ. And that good news is going to be, uh, for me, I hope for you, your constant, real consolation. We ask the Lord to help us to, to be together in this um, short time and to be able to reflect uh, uh, as best we can on the graces that God entrusts to us uh, on this Monday of Holy Week, the 25th of March. It is, I think, um, a, a great joy to call to mind uh, this 25th day of March, um, and I'll link that with a few things. But in particular, of course, the first uh, day after Palm Sunday that we're able to reflect on uh, the, the, the readings, um, the, the richness uh, of our faith, the graces that come to us uh, because of the revelation of Christ as Redeemer and his willingness to, to carry us forward. I um, shared a sermon uh, uh, for Palm Sunday um, asking this question right up front. Uh, do you think Pilate ever got it? Um, I was so struck by the verse, Pilate was uh, amazed that Jesus had died so soon. And I, um, I wondered about that quite a bit, uh, because we know how treacherous that road was from Gethsemane uh, to Calvary and how um, destructive the passion was, uh, not only to Christ, but to the hopes of the disciples. And so this Monday after Palm Sunday, this 25th of March, I think is a time for us really to, to draw solace from that great uh, devotion of Jesus to the Father's will, and to be able for us to absorb a little bit more of how our daily lives might be integrated. And the key for me, especially on this 25th day of March, is that this is the day nine months prior to the birth of Christ that we recollect on the 25th December. Once the church began to talk about the 25th December as Jesus's birthday, then it's not hard for very uh, common folk uh, to start thinking about that meant that the angel Gabriel had to come nine months earlier on the 25th of March. And so this day is the Annunciation of the Lord in the Catholic tradition and in other traditions. But to be able to realize that the events of Holy Week take the place of that um, gift. The sermon I preached today about whether Pilate ever got it uh, is because uh, we wonder why he was so astonished that he had been burdened so. And of course, we think of the blood, the torture, uh, the abandonment, the weight of the cross, even with the help of Simon of Cyrene. But the reality is that that's not the burden that Christ was carrying. Christ was carrying the brokenness of the earth, the brokenness of humanity, the sins uh, accumulated that separated us from God, that closed the door of heaven. And by the grace of the sacrifice of Christ at the cross, we are able to appreciate a little bit of this great weight. We ought to be surprised at how he could stand it even as long as he did, three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, but it is much more than that. It has to do with an entire weight of burden and brokenness that he was willing to carry for us and bring to us in the graces that he gave us. And it is in that astonishment of Pilate that he had died so soon that we begin to realize that there's a lot more going on here, and there always has been, than we're able to penetrate, even when we're um, at the end of a, of a long journey of, of scriptural and theological development, even when we come to inherit such a rich tradition of, of grace and wonder. And on the Feast of the Annunciation, to contemplate the Blessed Virgin Mary 
as probably in so many ways the pioneer of our faith, uh, as the one who heard an angel, spoke with the angel, objected to the humanity, how can this be since I do not man, but fully absorbed the divinity and was able to receive that grace because of the preparation that God had done in her life to be able to bring her the willingness to give her heart and mind to this um, Savior of the world, this Son of God. And in the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, we know that that union is complete, that there is, in fact, by the grace of God, something so much more in what we understand than we're able really even to put into words. But I'm going to try a little bit, like all of us do, to try to say again, to say in a new way, to say in a deeper way, what it is that we believe. The scripture for the 25th of March is... Of course, the first chapter of Luke, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. And of course, in the Catholic tradition in particular, that translation, full of grace, implies a whole level of preparation on God's part for her to be recognized as the one who had the capability on a human plane to be able to penetrate to the heart of the divinity of what was being promised here. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, for you too, Mary, have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you shall name him Jesus, and he will be great, and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And of course, all of us have meditated on those promises, on the, on the, the miracle of this birth, on the uh, astonishment that must have come to the Blessed Virgin, uh, to Mary, uh, especially since we guess her age, um, obviously uh, fertile, so uh, 14 uh, for uh, lots of um, lots of the uh, history of humanity. Uh, they didn't have an adolescence, um, and for those of you who are parents of adolescents, uh, that probably looks pretty good. But I think it is for us to realize that there is God's preparation to allow this woman, as young as she probably was, to be able to hear the angel's voice, to be able to discuss this from the point of view of adulthood, and to be able to accept responsibility for the commitment that she was making. How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And it is, in, in so many ways, that understanding of the bare necessities that I'd like to particularly talk about when it comes to, as um, Cheryl McCarthy says, Oh, Cheryl McCarthy... Today's her birthday, the 25th of March, and so I'm particularly grateful to be able to make that address and to share that joy um, for those of you who, who know her work and who know her prayer, um, and to be able to be friends with her uh, is really a, a, a such a great blessing. So happy birthday, Cheryl. Uh, but on this 25th of March, uh, thinking about the necessities of pioneering leadership uh, to find a way uh, where we're able to, to engage in what we do not know. Um, Abraham left Ur of the Chaldees uh, without a firm understanding of where that call might lead him. And the same with the Blessed Mother, um, responding to the angel, uh, hardly able to even absorb what, what has been, been said, but she knew that there was fundamental necessities, that there was, in fact, a way where all of us uh, hopefully, would be able to say, what do I need to accomplish the thing that God is asking of me? Uh, I um, qualify as a pioneering leader because I have um, begun the work necessary um, in uh, church planting to be able to start a new Catholic parish in southwest central uh, Wake County, below, uh, below Raleigh um, and north of the parish where I work at Fuquay Varina. 
And so in this area where 540 is being completed, we want to see the call of God and we want to be able to see how we can best bring about the future of the Catholic Church in this area with so many newcomers and so many Catholics moving in. It is, I think, for us to say, how can this be? Not because we don't have relations with a man but because we understand that there are human necessities and practical details, and sometimes we see those as the fundamental obstacles to where we might be going. It is, I think, for us to realize that there will always be objection. The reading uh, for the day, for the Monday of Holy Week, has to do with the uh, with the anointing of Jesus and the house of, of Simon the leper and, and the way in which the objections came up about why this costly perfume was used in such a way. But Jesus understands so much more about what's going on. And this son of Mary is able to look to the truth of the heart of the woman who, quote unquote, wasted. But how could any of them know that it was, in fact, a preparation for burial? We ask the Lord to help us to know that, that there is more going on. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm constantly reminded in God's good grace that there's more here than meets the eye. And the practical necessities are going to be surmounted by the action of God on our behalf and for our protection. It is at this moment I'd like to ask you to pray. Ask the Lord to be with you and to share with you this intercession of the Blessed Mother as a pioneering leader walking into the unknown, but confident that God will supply. Lord God in heaven, Lord God of earth, hear our prayers. Strengthen us to respond to you, so that we know that every cost is appreciated, that every action in benefit of Christ is worth it, that we have come to you not because we are capable, but because we know that you welcome our need, that you open the door for us and help us to come ever closer to you. Allow us, with the inspiration of Mary, acknowledging the words of the angel, let it be done to me according to your will. And we, who are following Christ, know that he gave the same answer, not my will, but yours be done, even if this cup is still in front of me. We ask the Lord in this holy week that the leaders who are here, that these pioneers following a voice, an angel of inspiration and guidance, may indeed have the comfort of knowing that you have already prepared the way, and that although the unknown is uncertain, even though the necessities of, of human relationships are, are un, unable to be explained, that you have the miracle of that love that is able to build churches, that is able to lead us into unknown, that is able to give us hope and promise and covenant. That's the success of Mary's faith, that she responds to this angel after discussing the issues of basic human need, that there is a trust in God greater than all of that. God bless you. We make this prayer in Jesus' name, with holy anointing, in the power of the Spirit, in honor of God the Father. Amen. <laughs>